Why does the thumb of the right hand go here? Well, it has to do with all the basic stuff, the stuff that helps make the best, most musical sound possible. More weight in the bow, more suppleness and flexibility and balance so the hand can be fast and agile. First, let's look at the hand away from the bow and define balance. The balance of the hand comes from the symmetry of the hand and where the thumb naturally wants to fall. The thumb has a natural tendency to meet the middle two fingers right in the center. Well, because it's the center. The tip of the thumb being here makes the whole thumb nice and rounded, a perfect arch that can help facilitate all of the agility and supple strength needed to use the cello bow. If your thumb naturally wants to be somewhere else on the bow or to one side of the hand or the other, that is usually due to bad habits that have formed. Plus, when the thumb is pushed to one extreme side or the other of the hand, this creates tension and limits the range of motion and the flexibility of the hand and fingers to move and adapt to different bow techniques. Now that you know what a balanced hand is and how the thumb should be shaped around the bow, Let's talk about the contact points on the bow itself by first talking about why we hold the bow down here at the frog in the first place. Well, in the Baroque era and before it, the bow was held in all sorts of places along the stick. The way the bow was made in combination with the gut strings made this kind of bow hold in this part of the stick more ideal. As music evolved and progressed, more extremes were written into the music, more highs and lows and faster back and forth. Thus, instruments became stronger to withstand all this, and musicians began to play with different techniques to bring out these extremes. That brings us to the bow. By holding it at the frog, the heavy part of the bow, I am able to get lots of weight into the bow right here at this point. That allows for heavy accents, great big fortissimos and crescendos, and all sorts of other extended techniques. By contrast, this puts very little weight at the tip, so that when I want to play very soft and very light and create all of those kinds of colors, I have the option to do so. So here we are at our destination, the frog, and at this point, logistically and practically, there are not too many options for the hand. I sometimes think the way we hold the bow is a matter of real estate as much as it is musical necessity. Remember that the hand needs to stay balanced and the hand needs to stay on the frog. If I go too far this way, I am getting away from the frog and more into that bow hold that doesn't give me all the expressiveness I am after. If I go this way, my little finger has nowhere to be and my thumb doesn't really have a good place to go. My hand being here is the optimal place to get all my fingers working together properly on the frog with all the weight I can use to get the bow into the string. The last part is to decide exactly how the thumb should approach the bow and what angle. If I go too far under, I risk clamping on the bow, leading to tension and lack of ability to play expressively. More importantly, with my thumb underneath, I will most certainly want to press up, which is going to take the bow off the string and counteract all the weight I am trying to get into the bow, which is the exact opposite of what I want to happen. If I put the thumb on top to help the weight go down into the stick, I have no control. I am unable to hold it in any kind of fashion that will allow me to do all the things I need to do. Those highs and lows and extremes, the expressive playing and music making that make playing cello so awesome. So a happy middle, a compromise in between becomes the best option. The thumb going into the stick, not under, not on top, is the best position for the thumb to be in coming into the bow. This allows the thumb to be flexible, and help hold the bow with supple strength and to direct the weight of the arm into the bow. As far as the exact point, putting the thumb partly on the frog, partly on the stick, allows for an anchor point that keeps the thumb from slipping without locking it into a position that would create tension. Now that you have an understanding of why the thumb goes where it goes and an improved bow hold, if you need to brush up on the positioning of the cello itself or learn it for the first time, then I have a video all about that and you can watch it right 